So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the work that goes on uh, in, my, in my group. So major focus is on uh, Staphylococcus aureus, uh, which is a normal uh, component of the normal uh, healthy human flora. So about 30% of us are colonized uh, with Staph aureus uh, in the nose, in the nasopharynx. Uh, you also find Staph aureus in the throat, in the uh, urogenital tract, uh, occasionally in a small uh, proportion uh, of people, and also uh, in the gut. It's not clear whether Staph aureus is actually colonizing the gut or whether it's a transient association with the gut, but you can find it there nonetheless. And it's clear, though, that nasal carriage is a major risk factor for infection. So if you go into hospital for some unrelated uh, procedure, like a surgical procedure, you're much more likely to uh, pick up a Staph aureus infection when you're in hospital if you have Staph aureus colonizing your nose. Um, the flip side of that is that if you go into hospital and you're not colonized in the nose with Staph aureus and you do happen to get a hospital acquired uh, infection, it's more likely to be a severe, more severe form of, of the disease. Because, presumably because you have a lower level of circulating antibodies, um, which are specific for uh, some of the virulence factors uh, produced by, by Staph aureus. Okay. So it can cause lots of different uh, human uh, diseases, from relatively benign skin infections to more deep-seated osteomyelitis infection of the bone marrow. Uh, it can cause uh, endocarditis, life-threatening infection of, of the heart valves. It can cause severe pneumonias, necronizing uh, pneumonia, uh, and, and so on and so forth. It's extremely versatile. Um, pathogen associated with a variety of different skin conditions. And you can see that it's hit the headlines a lot, uh, particularly in the context of antibiotic resistant strains of Staph aureus. So we've had a huge problem in the UK and, and most of the world has been affected by this of MRSA or methicillin resistant strains of Staph aureus which are, have been a major endemic problem in, in hospitals worldwide. Now, until recently, that was the case. In the last few years, we've seen a, a quite a dramatic decrease in the number of MRSA infections occurring in, in hospitals, which is probably due to a number of factors, but including improved hygiene and infection control in, in hospitals. But <coughs> we see that uh, these... MRSA infections are now more likely to, to occur in the community, uh, outside the hospitals. We see a number of different clonal lineages of community-acquired MRSA, which can cause infections in otherwise completely healthy humans. So the ones in hospitals usually rely on the fact that the uh, humans in there are probably immunocompromised in some, some form or another. These community-associated strains seem to be more virulent and can cause disease in healthy healthy humans. Uh, we also see companion animals affected by uh, MRSA. Now these usually come directly from the owners of these uh, com uh, companion animals. So these are kind of reverse zoonotic uh, events, if you like. We don't think that Staph aureus is adapted to colonize and spread in, in companion animals. However, it is adapted to colonize and spread in some livestock, such as cows, uh, dairy cows in particular, sheep and goats, um, rabbits and chickens. They all have their own different set of, of strains associated with those particular host species. In addition to livestock, I'm showing you the livestock here, Staph aureus has been isolated from a very large array of different uh, animal hosts. Uh, in, in some cases, it's not clear again whether they are actually adapted to colonize those animal hosts or whether they're just transiently associated uh, with them. But 
In terms of economically important uh, infections, these are the most important ones. Mastitis in cows, sheep and goats. <coughs> Staphorus also colonizes pigs, and particularly MRSA seems to evolve uh, in pigs, or certain strains seem to of MRSA have evolved in pigs, probably due to the use of antibiotics for growth promotion and prophylactic uh, treatment of infections within the pig uh, farming industry. And then in chickens, we get, they get joint infections, again, it's usually commensal, and then they get joint infections, uh, which result in lameness in these uh, chickens. So this is quite a big problem in, uh, in the broiler um, poultry industry. And then in parts of the world where we farm rabbits uh, for their meat, essentially, Staph aureus causes epidemics on these uh, rabbit, rabbit farms. So in France, Spain, uh, China, some of the main uh, areas for rabbit farming, Staph aureus is a major epidemic pathogen which affects these, um, these rabbit farms. So um, my group and others have been interested in understanding what these Staph aureus strains look like. So how, how genetically diverse they are, do we see different strains associated with different species, or is there a lot of cross-species uh, transmission going on?